AMD, we need some clarity. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world. You know it is, and JJ and JJ's PC builds. Okay, I went into the, and before we get started, hold on. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe. Would be appreciated. We're trying to work towards 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And also, too, I want to welcome all the new uh, subscribers. Welcome to the JJ's PC Builds family. And all you subscribers that are here, I want to thank you for being a subscriber. You're awesome, and thank you for helping to support the channel. Now, let's get to the clarity. Okay, now the thing is, is this. This is, this is what's been missed. And I think a lot of reviewers miss this. And, you know, even, even myself, I even missed this. Okay, now it's all starting to make sense and get clarity. The reason why the 7900 XTX was having a bunch of uh, heating problems and everything else that the, that the, 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 the cooler heat sink for the, for the GPU wasn't made correctly and everything else. You know, it's starting to make clarity sense why, why it didn't come out the right way. That they had to go back and fix problems because they basically, they rushed the 7900 XTX out first. They rushed the card out first. This is, explains why the AIB partners were scrambling to get the 7900 XTX put out there as well. This is a AMD's fault. AMD made this big mistake. You know, by putting out the 7900 XTX instead of canceling the, the RX 7950 XTX. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the action screen, and I'm going to show you all why. Okay, I'm going to try to do this the best I can, so bear with me, and let's go ahead and see if we can do it just, just to get you all clear on what's going on. Now, so we do the RX 7900 XTX stats, okay? I want to clear this up, you know, and then let's open Tech Power up. Okay, now let's open up a new one. Let's open up the RX 7950 XTX stats. Okay, let let's let's go for the clarity of this. Let's let's get it right. Okay. So now I'm going to separate the two windows, right? I'm going to make one smaller, and then I'm going to separate the other window, and I'm going to make it smaller, okay? So we can see both windows at the same time. Try to at least. Let's see if I can do this. Eh. Bear with me. We're, we're going to get there. So that's about the best I can do. Okay, now look at, the two, look at the two cards right here from the beginning. Same exact cards. Now I want you all to understand this. Same exact cards. Let's scroll down a little bit. <laughs> Same exact die. Look at that. S recommended solution. Same. Okay. Now, let's scroll down a little bit more. Okay. Now, look at the difference. Okay. Release date on the 7950 never released. Why was this card held back from us? It is the same exact card. Why was the 7950 XTX not put into production? Why was that not a card that they should have given us in the first place? Look at this. 
7950 XTX is above the 4090, the RTX 4090 from NVIDIA by nine by 7%. I said 7%. Now look at the 7900 XTX. So you take and do your math, okay? Do your math, right? So looking at this, 76%, right? So you take 100 and do your math and minus it from 76%. So you're telling me that the 7950 XTX is 24% faster than the 7900 XTX. Okay? 24% faster from what this is saying. Okay, now, since I did the math and I showed you all the percentages, now let's keep going down the road and see what we see. Okay, now they both have the bandwidth of 960 gigabits. They both have a 384-bit bus. They both are GDR6. They both have 24 gigs of VRAM. Okay, now look at the clock speeds. This is this is where I don't get it. How come the 7950XTX has the base clock of 2200 megahertz and the 7900 XTX has 1855 megahertz? Why is the shader clock 2269 on the 7900 XTX and the 7950 is 3000. Okay, the game clock is 2269 on the 7900 XTX, but the game clock on the 7950 XTX is 3000. Okay, the memory clock is the same on both. Okay, let's keep going down the road and see if we see anything that looks, you know, out of the ordinary. So, looking at the rendering configurations, 6164, 61, no, 6144, 6144. TMUs, 384, 384. ROPS, 192, 192. Compute Unit, 96, 96. RT Cores, 96, 96. Okay, everything is exact the same in the rendering config. Theoretical can performance. That's what we're going to look at. The pixel rate, 479.8 gigapixels. 7950 XTX is 633.6 gigapixels. Okay, so you're trying to tell me, and we're just going to go down it, Texture rate, 959.6 gigatexels, and the 7950, 1,267 gigatexels. Okay, now let's keep moving down the road. The FP16, 122.8 T-flops, 2 to 1. Okay, the... The 7950XTX has 162.2 T-flops, 2 to 1. Okay, FP32, 61.42 T-flops. 7950XTX has 81.10 T-flops. FP, on seven, now we're back on the 7900. The FP64 doubles got 1,919 T-flops, 1 to 32. Now look at over on the 7950. The FP64 double is 2,534 2, T-flops. Okay, 1 to 32. Okay, now you see the between the... The clocks and the theoreticals, okay, that's the change. The clocks and the theoreticals, you know, are different. But everything pretty much else, everything pretty much else is the same.
why would they give us a cut down card? This is the question. Why would you cut down the 7950 XTX to the 7900? Why were you holding this card? Why were you holding this card hostage away from the public when you got into and you announced and had that big, big discussion, you know, in your event that you had a card that would blow everybody's mind, okay? You sent out the wrong card. The 7950 XTX should have been the next big thing from AMD. Why would you send us a cut down card that's almost similar to the same as the 7950 XTX? Why would you cut all that stuff off? That's going to be the question. What, what, I want everybody to, you know, hone in on this, leave a comment, let me know what the hell you think about this, because I think this is crap. This was, because the last video I just made, I was trying to get this out. I was trying to get this part out. So I'm going to make this a part two to that, so that way you all can see what the hell is going on with AMD. Why were they holding back the, you know, the 7950 XTX? You know, I feel that the 7950 XTX should have been the top tier card. Now, the 7900 XTX should have been the second tier card like the 7900 XT. The 7900 XT should have never existed. So, they should have been the 7950 XTX and the 7900 XTX. Or it should have been the 7950 XTX and the 7950 XT, which would have been the 7900 XT, or the 7900 XTX. So, what do you all think? Let me know in the comment. And also, too, I just want to stay on this subject for a couple more minutes while I got the time. Because I got, you know, I got a bunch of running to do today, just to let you know. So I will be back, but I will get to your comments. And believe it or not, I will get to your comments. If they're a little bit late getting back to your comments, I will get to them. So be patient. You know, there's only one of me and I don't have anybody else helping me. So this is just one of me. <laughs> so just to let you know, because I am on my own doing this. So I will get to your comments as fast as possible. Okay. But I want you all to think about this. Let this sink in. Get the word out. Why did AMD do this? Why, why did they switch from having the best card that they could have had compared to the R RTX 4090 and just leave all that on the table? Leave all that end power end on the table and give us a cut down card from the 7950 XTX. Why did they do this? You know, that's a question that needs to be out there. And nobody ever looked at because they claim that, you know, like I told you again, they claim that they had the best next best thing. They did, but they, what did they do? Let's roll down here again. What did they do? Never released it. This would have been a better release than the 7900 XTX. In my opinion, the 7950 XTX would have been balls to the wall card compared to the 7900 XTX. Or, yeah, the 7900 XTX should have never existed. Now, the 7950 XTX should have existed and they should have had a 7950 XT to have in existence and then worked their way down from that down to the 7900 and then the 79 the 7900 XTX then the 7900 XT that should have been their second tier down why would they do this to us why would they give us a card that you know you're leaving a lot of performance on the table by giving us this card, the 7900 XTX. I want you all to sink that in and think about it. 
and now since i put that into your mind you all can comment on it down below now the another thing i want to get to okay and i'm gonna pull my face back up on the screen okay i want you all to understand something okay when it comes to the low tier cards it goes by what you can afford okay yeah i switched gears but low tier cards goes by what you can afford number one it goes by what better deal you can get for that money let's say you got two hundred dollars to spend right or say three hundred dollars to spend what would you buy for you know for 300 bucks that's well worth your while well you can't get the 4060 ti because that's 400 dollars. you know you know you can't get that so what are you going to do you're going to wait till july to get the rtx rtx 4060 for what 300 bucks and that's a cut down card from the 4060 ti which you know you got other reviewers not even recommending that card to anybody you know you get some that are using it it's good for gaming and everything else you know it's good because it's like a mid to low tier card okay don't get it wrong it's not a bad card so you know it's still got av1 encoding and you know so does the rx 7600 that just came out they both got av1 encoding you know they they both got features on it okay now your lower tier into your six thousands now they don't have they have you know slower features okay but if you're in a price range of three hundred dollars because of inflation i had to move my price point from two hundred to three hundred dollars okay the reason why i said two hundred dollars back then in a low price point was because back then inflation was down now inflation is higher you got to move it up a hundred dollars so that way you got a low tier price point which is three hundred dollars okay so if you can afford within 300 bucks you can afford you know something that's a hundred and let's say let's say if you're look that's if you're looking for brand new okay if you're looking for used you can go to ebay believe it or not you can go to ebay and pick up any card you want for whatever price point you want you know you can get a better deal there but do remember you only get a 30-day warranty with ebay you know if the seller allows a return policy now if the seller doesn't have a return policy then you're stuck with the card so do remember that so you'd be stuck with somebody else's crap compared to if you bought off of Amazon and you got brand new and you got it with a little bit of a warranty. Okay, at least you're covered with a little bit of a warranty, at least with the factory warranty, you know. So do think about that. If you want a warranty or you don't want a warranty, okay, you take the risk of how, if you get a card that's used you get a risk of how badly beaten it's been and how much they used it and how much pressure they put on it you know how hard of gaming they did on it to weaken those chips remember transistors do not last forever the more heat you put on a transistor the weaker it becomes doesn't matter what kind of transistor it's just like your car audio your amplifier for your car audio okay the more pressure and more power you put you know pressure you put on those transistors the weaker they become and then sooner or later poof they pop okay so remember no transistor lasts forever but if you're buying brand new then you're assured that that transistor is brand new and also too when you buy brand new you get assured that nobody's played on it and then you know you look at it that way but if something's wrong when it's brand new and it doesn't do what it says, then you can send it back, RMA it, and get yourself a different one. So you have that option. Now with eBay, you got 30 days to test it out. You know, you get, you know, a good amount of time, but that's if the seller allows it. 
so you got to keep that in mind too so if you're looking for a low budget card that you can't you know something that you can afford within the price point of a hundred bucks but you can't buy it brand new then go to ebay and get something used within a price point of a hundred dollars because you definitely can find a rx 580 eight eight gigabytes of vram you know for less than a hundred bucks that's if you're looking for something like that you know if you're in the 200 dollars tier point then you're basically best off to go with brand new if you're within the 200 tier dollar point you're best off to go with brand new and get a warranty okay just to be honest with you that's the way i would go about it okay but if you're if your budget's like below 100 bucks then you know you're best off to go to the used tier point to find yourself the same price well basically you can get a 580 for rx 580 for less than 100 bucks on ebay but if you go to the new point you can get it for less than 120 dollars on amazon so it's only twenty dollars more to get brand new compared to used i'd rather get the brand new one compared and just this is an example i'd rather get you know get twenty more dollars up buy it brand new get a warranty on it and everything else then to buy it used and have it blow up within a year so at least i got one card that's brand new that's going to last me at least three to four years now understand this when it comes to um graphics cards graphics cards as long as they're within your tier of system will last the the life of your computer okay graphics cards will last the life of your computer let's say you got a computer that's 10 years old and you got a graphics card that's in there that's 10 years old and it still runs just as good guess what it lasted 10 years okay that's the point okay when you buy a graphics card if you don't do heavy gaming on it you do light gaming and it gives you everything you want that doesn't beat the crap out of the card that card will last you for years okay i got a system over here that's close to 12 13 years old that's running um a GTX 730 4 gigabytes will still play on Second Life and it still will give me 40 to 60 FPS on Second Life and that's a Dell computer so I don't have I don't have a bad system over there it's a pretty good system it's an older system it's an i5 2400 which that's second gen runs ddr3 memory so 16 gigs of ddr3 memory and it's got a ssd drive uh 256 gigabyte ssd drive but that's all i need in it because i i, I really don't play like you know hard gaming on that the only thing I use that for is I use it for DJing on Second Life. Okay, yes, I do DJ on Second Life. Just to let you know. Yes, I do do music on Second Life. <laughs> so, but the point is, is this. No matter what card you get, it's still going to work good for you. If you're going to do 720p light gaming, then, you know, you can use something like a of a 580 perfectly you can use a rx 580 590 i'd rather go with the 590 really or you can go with the 6400 or the 6500 xt even though that i didn't like the 6500 xt because i tried it i tried it on second life and it worked it worked okay on second life it still gave me a good fps but it's just it didn't have the horsepower that i was looking for so if you're looking for cards like that you know to where you can spend under 200 bucks then you know that's a good way to go 
Now, as far as if you want to go over $200, let's say you get a $300 price range and, you know, you wanted to venture up, let's say you got that $300 price range, then go to the RX 7600 XT, the brand new one just came out. Gives you slightly better advantage than the 6650 XT, slightly. But for $20 more to get that slightly 2 to 3% more, that's not too bad. I kind of had to take a step back on that and think about it between the 6650 XT and the 7600. I really had to think about that. One, the 6650 doesn't have AV1 encoding. Let's go there. It doesn't have extra uh, rasterization. Go there. It doesn't have extra RT cores. I can go there. You know, and, you know, there's advantages that card has. Can probably do FSR 3 to where the 6650 can only do FSR 2. You know, Start thinking about the disadvantages and the advantages some of the cards have. Price range for $20, $30 more, you know, in that price range. Better yet, RX 7600 is your better, better bet. People don't cover that because they don't look at it like that. I do look at it like that because I think about what the consumer wants and not what I want. What I want and what the consumer wants... You know, if I want something better, faster, and everything else, then, you know, I'll go up the tier. If it can, if it, if you can afford it, then go up the tier. If you know you got a decent system, okay, let's say, let's say you got a B550, um, Asus B550 Strix motherboard with a, with the Ryzen, Ryzen 5800X. Let's go there. And you got 64 gigs of DDR4 3600 CL16 RAM for the computer. Go there. So let's say you got all that in there. And you got enough cooling and everything else for the processor. You got at least a 850 watt power supply. Then yes, guess what? The RTX 4070 would rock that. It would definitely rock that. It would definitely give you everything you would want in that kind of system. Now that system right there, that's a thousand bucks. You want to know how I know that? I did the pricing. I got a similar system to that right now. The only difference is I got a B450. If I were to get the B550 Strix and change this motherboard in here and put, you know, a 58 or a 5700X in here, oh boy, you imagine this system's going to rock. Okay, because now I'm taking it from the, the PCIe 3.0 to take it to PCIe 4.0 X16. Instead of me having onboard iGPU, I would no longer have that. You would have 36 megs of L3 cache plus an additional, let's say, let's say you have about 39 megs of L, uh, L cache. Mix between L2 and L3. Okay, because do remember between the 5700X and the 5800X, they share the L cache. So it shares it with either the process, the, it, shares the pro, it shares it either with the RAM or it shares it with the, the GPU. So. Hard to say on that, how they got that mixed ball of mix. But when we get there, I will tell you, we will get there. 
So I will tell you, we'll get there soon. And when, when I got my next video that's going to be coming up, and I pray to God, I pray to God, the package that I'm waiting for comes in tomorrow from Amazon. Told you I got something coming. So something is coming. And I pray to God it's coming from Amazon tomorrow. If not, then you'll find on the next video that it didn't come and I'm kind of disappointed and everything to go along with that. Then you'll have to wait till Wednesday. Hopefully it'll come in between Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'm hoping for Tuesday, but let, let's kind of give it a little leeway and say between Tuesday and Wednesday. But anyway, I just wanted to let you know that that's a little teaser for y'all. <laughs> I left you a little teaser in there. So, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here because I got a lot going on and a lot to do today. So I will see you on the next, well, we're not going to go to the end until I tell y'all. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. We're working towards 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Now, what people don't understand is they don't understand what I mean by 4,000 watch hours. Well, if every subscriber watches every video I have from beginning to end, it would add more onto the clock because the 4,000 hours is the, the limit to where I need to get monetized at. So I need 1,000 subscribers and, and, 4,000 watch hours that means every subscriber every non-subscriber if they watch the videos from beginning to end and they watch all my videos then what happens is YouTube will put more time on the clock so this way we can get up to the monetization now the reason why we can't do anything like uh, advertise for you know like putting in a you know, have like, uh, uh, you know, how, how everybody has like little stores and stuff like that, you know, to help to support the channel even more. I can't put that in. I can't do anything until I'm monetized by the, by the rules of YouTube. So that's the reason why I'm stuck. And I hope that everybody subscribes and helps us out here. Because that's where we're stuck until we get monetized. Then once that happens, then that opens up the floodgates and then we can start putting, you know, building up a store, get some merch out there for you guys to buy, you know, come up with something cool, you know, and everything else. But we can't do that until we get to the monetization part. So that's where I'm stuck and that's our goals is to get monetized. So, you want to help support the channel, subscribe, watch the videos, put some positive likes, would be appreciated. And all the new subscribers that did subscribe, I do see we got two more new subscribers today. Welcome to the family, welcome to JJ's PC Builds. And all the subscribers we have now. I want to thank you all for being here and supporting the channel. You all are awesome and the best. Just to let you know. And I'm going to keep saying it, so do expect it, and I'll keep repeating it until you believe it. <laughs> so that's just the way I am. That's just the way I am. I'm a man of a heart, and I do my best trying to make these videos for you guys. Okay. Everything that I'm doing right now is coming out of my pocket. I'm, and if I got people that are helping and supporting the channel on the side to help me get equipment and stuff like that, you know, that is appreciated even more. Because that's helped the channel grow and everything else. Because I know in the end that, you know, good things always happen get help uh good things always happen to people that have positive outcomes on things 
So sometimes I will have a couple negative things to say about companies and I will have positive things to say about companies. Do not get it wrong. I say that because the way I see it, just like the fact of AMD doing what they did last minute and everybody thinking, oh, they're getting the next best thing, but finding out they benched the next best thing and gave them gave everybody the second best thing. So, again, y'all leave your comments below. Until the next time and the next video, this is JJ on JJ's PC Builds. We will see you on, on the next one.